Hey guys, welcome back to Gluten-Free Habit. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this gluten-free cinnamon swirled pound cake. Pound cake is one of those great treats to make because it's so delicious, it's not hard to make, and it works well for so many occasions. You can put it on your breakfast table or bring it to a brunch or to work to share, and it's even just great to have sitting on your counter. It looks beautiful, it makes the house smell wonderful because of the cinnamon, and it stays moist for days. I'll put the recipe down below in the description box, and I've also put the measurements in weight down below just in case you have a scale. That's definitely the more accurate way to go. And here we go with the ingredients. You'll need some brown rice flour, tapioca flour, corn starch, granulated sugar, a little salt, xanthan gum, baking powder, softened butter, vegetable oil, buttermilk, vanilla, some eggs at room temperature, cinnamon, and some powdered sugar for the glaze. You'll also need a 9x5 loaf pan and, if you have one, a digital thermometer. Measuring the interior temperature of your cakes and breads is really important, so if you don't happen to have one, I encourage you to get one if you can. Okay, let's get everything ready. First, preheat your oven to 350 degrees and set out your eggs and your butter to bring them to room temperature. Now grease and flour your pan with gluten-free flour. I'm just using some brown rice flour here. And make sure that the entire surface is really well floured because the cake could tear if it sticks to the pan. Now let's get started. First, mix up the filling by stirring together the three tablespoons of granulated sugar and the cinnamon. Make sure it's thoroughly mixed up and then set it aside for later. Now in a medium-sized mixing bowl, mix together your dry ingredients. Brown rice flour, tapioca flour, corn starch, salt, xanthan gum, and baking powder. Whisk this together thoroughly. Now set that aside for later. Time to cream the butter. In a large mixing bowl, cream together your two sticks of butter and one and a third cups of the sugar. To really cream the butter, you'll mix on high for about five minutes. You'll notice that as you're mixing and making air bubbles in the butter, it'll become soft and fluffy and it'll begin to lose its color a little bit. It won't be quite so yellow. So the reason pound cake is called pound cake is because originally it was made with a pound each of flour, butter, eggs, and sugar. Nowadays, pound cakes are made with so many variations to fit personal tastes. This recipe has a few variations as well, and I guess that's just the fun of baking. So feel free to customize this to your own personal preferences. You may want to scrape down the bowl once or twice during your mixing. Now mix in the eggs one at a time, beating in each egg just until the yolk is blended in. In this video, you'll notice that I'm adding four eggs here, but after fine tuning this recipe a little bit, I've decided that five eggs works best. So always go with what I have written in the recipe below. Thank you. 
Now add your flour mixture one third at a time, mixing on medium speed in between each addition, just until it's blended in. So here are some tips I would give you to make sure that your pound cake is a success. First of all, make sure that your ingredients are at room temperature before you begin, because this will give a better texture to the cake since room temperature ingredients will blend together more smoothly and trap air more efficiently, which will give your cake more volume. Cold ingredients just don't work as well. Number two, leave the oven door closed. I know it's tempting to open it up and peek in or smell the cinnamon, but leave it closed until the end of baking when you insert a thermometer. And the reason for this is that opening the door causes a huge wave of heat to come out and that big fluctuation in temperature can cause your cake to collapse. And third, let your cake cool in the pan for no longer than 20 minutes. You don't want to steam it in the pan because then it'll stick and possibly tear when it's removed. And now we'll add the final ingredients. Your vanilla, oil, and buttermilk. And mix that all in. Now bring your bread pan over and spoon in one third of the batter. If you're using a medium sized spatula like I have here, it'll be roughly five scoops. And then smooth the top to flatten it. And this doesn't have to be super perfect. Now sprinkle on one half of the cinnamon mixture. And now we're going to layer this, so spoon on another one third of the batter. Smooth it out. and then sprinkle on the remaining one half of the cinnamon mixture, so all of it should be used up now. This may seem like a lot of filling, but when you taste the cake, you'll see that it's just the right amount. And now add your final layer of batter and smooth out the top. Now the fun part, to swirl the cinnamon throughout the cake. I just take a butter knife and do spirals along the length of the cake three times, and this will just make sure that you have delicious cinnamon in every bite. When you're done, smooth over the top, making sure that there's no dry cinnamon showing. And before I pop it in the oven, I use a knife to draw a line down the center of the cake. And this just helps the cake to crack just in the right place, right down the center. I started doing this because sometimes my cake would crack in random places, not down the center, and it tasted great, but it just didn't look as pretty. Now while the cake is in the oven, let's make the glaze. Combine two tablespoons butter with the confectioner's sugar, milk, and vanilla, and stir until it's perfectly smooth.
When the cake is most of the way through baking, you can insert the thermometer to check the temperature. I usually do this at about 55 minutes into the baking. When it's all done, remove the cake from the oven. There's hardly anything better than cinnamon bread fresh from the oven. This nice crack down the center of the cake is supposed to be there. It's the hallmark of a good pound cake and I'll tell you more about that later. Let your cake cool in the pan for about 20 minutes before trying to remove it because it'll be too delicate before that point and it might break. So here's my pound cake after I've removed it and I've added the first layer of glaze. You can stop right here and the cake will be delicious, but my family likes a second layer of glaze so I'm going to add that now. I'm glazing my cake while it's still on the cooling rack and I have a paper towel underneath to catch any drips. I like it when the glaze drizzles down the side of the cake. I think it looks kind of pretty. So I make sure to add some extra glaze right near the edge so that it will. So if you've ever wondered why pound cakes have a crack down the center, it's because they're supposed to. Pound cakes are dense and the exterior will bake before the interior is done. So then as the inside bakes, it starts to rise and then it cracks the top. So if you want to avoid a cracked top, you can bake a pound cake in a tube pan rather than a loaf pan. And with the hole that's in the center of the tube pan, it will bake more evenly and it'll be a lot less likely to crack. So here's the finished pound cake after the glaze has set a little bit. It only takes about 10 to 15 minutes for the glaze to set up so that it's firm enough to slice. And it's time to eat. In my house, once I start slicing the cake, it disappears very quickly. This pound cake is moist and flavorful and it goes really well with a cold glass of milk, so eat up and enjoy. If you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up down below. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next gluten-free habit recipe. And be sure to leave me a comment because I love hearing from you guys and let me know what you think of the recipe. And here it is, gluten-free cinnamon swirl pound cake. I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.